So today we're going to go over DNS. So we log on to our Windows 2003 servers, and since they're servers, they can serve up different services. What does DNS do? Top level domain. What's an example of a top level domain? .org, edu, .com, .gov, .mil, um, .il, .au for Australia, .uk for United Kingdom, things like that. So that's a top level domain. So whoever's in charge of the top level domain then has subdomains. A subdomain would be like Amazon or Yahoo or SWTC. Those are the subdomains. And then underneath the subdomains, they have hosts, host records. A host record is like www or webmail. Those point to the specific servers or the IP addresses that we want to communicate with. So it goes top level domain, subdomains, host. That's how it's laid out. And there's a lot of other DNS records as well, and we'll explore those a little bit later. But the primary focus here is we want to get a DNS caching server so we can do our own um, DNS resolving and also play around with some TCP IP utilities. So I'm going to go to Add Remove Programs, go to Windows Components. And I want to select an a network service. The network service I'm going to choose is going to be DNS. So we're going to install DNS on this server. So if we wanted DHCP, we could just check DHCP. If we wanted uh, Internet Authentication Services, we just check it. So all we want is DNS right now. So we hit OK on that. And now you can see it's kind of grayed because partially checked underneath there. Right. And we just hit next. And it's going to go through and add those. So now it's installing the DNS service. And it says this computer is a dynamically assigned IP address. Well, if it's dynamically assigned, what does that mean? I get the IP address from somewhere else, and it could possibly change. So if a workstation or a client is going to use this server as its DNS server and the IP address is always changing, do you think that's a good idea? No. no. So this message is saying, um, yeah, you're going to want a static IP address assigned to the server if you're going to be running DNS. So just saying you better be sure to do that. Configure DNS, or let's try it out first and see if just by default, just by adding it, let's see if it will actually start working. So go with CMD. And what utility do we use to test DNS? What's that? Ping. So what do we ping then? A website? Oh, you mean a domain name? Yep. So let's ping www.yahoo.com. And it doesn't look like it's working. I'm not getting any response. All right. So I'm going to go take a look at DNS to configure DNS. Let's first use another utility called NSLOOKUP. And it says, well, the default server, I don't know what its name is. It's unknown. But the address of the server that I'm using is 192.168.10.149. And is that the address that I used here? No, Yeah, I thought it was 249. Did I mistype? Oh, look at that. Aha! Uh -huh. Now it's like saying, oh, there is no 149. So now I exit out of this and I go back into it. Okay, let's try Yahoo again. So notice I'm just typing the command www.yahoo.com. Notice my prompt, I'm actually inside of the NCNS lookup utility. It says, well, the server that we're using is unknown, but here's the address of the server, and it's timing out. And that is under Programs, Administrator Tools, and you'll see a DNS option. We're going to open up the DNS Management Utility. So here's the test server that I'm using. We're going to double-click on it, and we see Forward and Reverse Lookup Zones. I'm also going to change my view to Advanced, because watch what happens when we do that. Here's what happens, cached lookups. 
occur. So cache lookups, if I open that up, dot is the root, would identify a um, dot com or dot edu or dot gov underneath here as places that it's already cached. What does cache mean? Yeah, temporarily stored it. Yep, so right now I don't have any cache lookups because it's not actually working. Um, and it's not working because if I'm trying to resolve Yahoo's DNS servers, and it does that by asking the root servers who's in charge of Yahoo. So where is that? Where do those servers exist? Out on the internet, correct? So, can my computer get out to the internet? Ah, this server is going to have to be able to get out to the internet to be able to talk to those, right? So, let's see if I can get out to the internet. Ping is a great utility to do that. I cannot get out to the internet. Can you give me a reason why? A gateway to the internet. So, let me configure my gateway. The gateway for the 10 network is 192.168.10.1. So now I have a default gateway, and now let's see if I can ping out to the internet. I can. So now let's see if I can ping www.yahoo.com. Aha! I can now. So now, now that I pinged yahoo.com, now let's take a look at the cache lookups. What did I say was going to happen over here? It's going to add the .com top-level domain, right? Let's go over here and hit refresh. Ah, look at that. .com, Yahoo. Ooh, look at that. There's the www, which is an alias record. An alias is another name for something, correct? The alias is www.wa1.b. Yep, the NS lookup, let me clear my screen here. <coughs> NS lookup by default is using what server? 192.168.10.249. Okay, so if now if I type www.swtc.edu, it resolves it. It says non authoritative answer, meaning this DNS server is not the authoritative server for it. Now if I change the server to server 4.2.2.2 and I type www.swtc.edu, now I'm using a different DNS server. I'm using a DNS server out on the internet somewhere. And I hit enter on this and it looks it up and it gives me the same answer. But still says non-authoritative answer. Well, who is the authoritative answer for www.swtc.edu? The WISCnet is, yeah, whoever's hosting our, our internet access. So to find that, I type set type equals ns, swtc.edu. So I'd set the type to name server, ns stands for name server. So I'm going to look up the name server for swtc.edu. And it looks like the, the server is dns.uwmilwaukee.wisknet.net. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to change my server now. Server is going to be dns.uw-mil.wisknet.net. So now I'm going to use the wisknet server, the DNS server. But now my set type is still set to name server, so I need to set type equals A. And that means it's an A record. And down here, an A record is a host record, as you can see down here on the screen behind this window. So now let's type www.swtc.edu, and we get an authoritative answer. Notice it does not say non-authoritative. It just says, yeah, here it is.